But the fox wasn't interested in leaving. So 20 minutes later, Jan gave him some encouragement. It was good to see him running off into the felt. Working with the foxes for so long has given Jan some unique insights into their lives. Following the signal of a collar one day, Jan found the animal had died when a termite hill it was sleeping under collapsed in the rain. When Jan discovered another dead collared Cape fox, he did an autopsy and was astonished to discover teeth marks that matched a jackal's jaw exactly. He later found a number of bat-eared foxes that had also been killed by jackals. He decided to see what each species was eating. The easiest way to do this was to collect scats. on the side of the road along bushes, just like this one right here. How do you know that is a jackal scat? Because it's based on the size and the, and the way it's marked, none of the other foxes actually mark on bushes like this. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's along a main road um, to the side, this is very typical of the size and, and uh, placement of a jackal scat. So we collect them by putting our hands through the plastic bag and then just reaching over them. By doing this, uh, we can tell exactly what the jackals are eating at different times of the year. For example, I can already tell there's many seeds but also, but also fur in here from an ungulate. So what we'll do back uh, in the laboratory is wash these scats, wash all the black stuff out of them, where we're just left with the seeds and the bones, then we'll identify the seeds and also identify the hairs to see what ungulate species this jackal has eaten. Back at base, Jan and student volunteers clean each scat separately and then dissect them. And it's been washed and dried. And what I'm finding here is the color and the length of the fur suggests it's a small mammal, hmm. like a rodent. And I'm also finding some bones here and even some teeth, which all suggests that this whole meal was probably a small mammal. And through analyzing this, what have you found about their dietary overlap? It was most surprising because knowing that the jackal does kill cape foxes, we thought they might be competing for food and that, you know, perhaps the cape fox and the jackal are both eating small mammals and therefore competing for the same food. But what in fact we're finding is that the primary diet of the jackal is ungulates, hares and ungulates, mainly springbuck, um, and that the primary diet of the cape fox are rodents and grasshoppers. Uh, and insects. So they only overlap, their diet only, only overlaps 20 to 40 percent, which isn't that significant. In other studies where there's heavy competition, animals usually overlap in the diet 70 or 80 percent. With a bat-eared fox, Jan has confirmed their diet consists almost exclusively of termites, yet they are still being killed by the jackals. Analysis of his radio tracking results sheds another angle on the subject. By marking all the jackal dens on a map of Benfontein and drawing a two-kilometer circle around each, Jan found the Cape foxes only established their dens outside jackal territories. And always where jackal numbers are higher, the Cape fox numbers are lower or even non-existent at the highest jackal densities. The findings have implications for the present jackal control programs. Perhaps a predator that farmers have worked so hard to eliminate might just be the solution to their problem. Leopards may have a, a significant impact on jackal mortality and therefore numbers because previous research on jackals and leopards showed that in some areas, for example in Kenya, some leopards were actually found to specialize on jackals. And also in Zimbabwe, a recent study on blackback jackals found that half of all blackback jackals were killed and eaten by leopards within a year. Jan's research is yet another example that shows if you mess with an ecosystem then there are impacts that reverberate to the very bottom of the food chain. Unfortunately such impacts may just mean the end of the Cape Fox as we know it.